This is an integrated literature and math lesson, which probably could last for about oh a week or two even. Um, we're going to start off with Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Um, what you probably would do is do it as a language arts lesson at the beginning, read the book several times possibly, ask your explicit questionings, uh, making connections, uh, using background knowledge and those kind of things. Now on the third day what you could do is you could talk about what are the numbers that are in the book. There are three bears. How many little girls are there? There's one. How many people were in the house when Goldilocks went in? There were zero. Um, we have three of everything in the house. We have different sizes of certain objects. We have a small, a medium, a large of the beds, the bowls, and the chairs, and the bears as well. Now you could do this activity with the children as the object. So we're going to do um, a concrete lesson and we could we could start out and we could actually use the children as the bears for example we could have different sized bowls for the the bowls uh, we could have different sized chairs we could bring in stuffed animals for the bears um, we could also do it with math manipulatives so one thing that we could start out with is Here's our house. And at the beginning of kindergarten, often children don't trust the count. If you put this many bears down, they would say there are three. Are there three if I arrange them differently? What happens when I put them going up and down rather than across? If I count this square, do I get the same answer whether I start with the purple bear or the green bear? Or is it different when I start with my blue bear? Young children really need to trust the count and they should have a solid foundation that the arrangement doesn't matter. So this is a great activity to do as a spin-off of Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Now today what we want to do is we want to focus on patterns. So here's our bears. We can bring in linking cubes and you can get the students to make their three sizes of chairs. You can bring in attribute blocks. And we can make a king size bed here. There's for Papa Bear, there's Mama Bears, and here's Baby Bears. So those could be our beds. Now, let your imagination go. You don't have to use these things. Here's some Play-Doh. And we can make bowls out of Play-Doh. So there's my small, medium, large. And then in our bears, they come in different sizes too. So there's my small, medium, large bear. Or here, let's let's go with a different color. Okay. So now we want to focus on patterns with the children. Now, often when we do patterns, we focus on color. Color is a big one. Now we need to think outside the box, and we can still do color, but we're going to do it with different manipulatives. So. If we wanted to do with our beds, for example, we've got red, yellow, red. We could easily switch into, into our bears like so. Okay? So we're still working with color. We've just changed our manipulatives. We could work with size. That might be our next pattern. Maybe I want to do big, big, small, small. Uh, another big bear, big, big. Now, it takes a lot of looking into this 
to see that this is big and this is big and these are small and small and these two are big. We're not just looking at color here, we're getting into size. And, and you can show the children and say, okay, we're going to make a different pattern using size. Okay, then we could go into patterns using thickness as our key. Okay, so I might have thick, thin, thin. I could even make my bowl so it looks thick. And squish these guys down and say, there's a thin, and there's a thin. So thick, thin, thin, thick, thin, thin. You want to add the variety. It's not just... A, B, A, B, or A, A, B, B. Now, I could also do shape. Now, you're going to find your students are going to do way more different types of patterns than what I'm showing you here. This is just to get your ideas going. So, that's one way how we can integrate literature and math at the same time.